Pamela Satpathi. I am an engineer turned uh, public servant. I was born in Sunapeda, Koraput, Odisha, and I'm presently serving in the state of Telangana. I'm working as a collector and district magistrate in Yadadri Bhuvanagiri district of Telangana, and I'm a 2015 batch officer. So this is the summary of my story, but we'll delve into it with a little bit of details. So since I'm talking to the Unit 8 DAV school, why not start with a sneak peek into my school days? So the journey of my self-actualization, if you may say so, uh, began in fifth standard. When I was studying in fifth standard, I clearly remember an uh, incident which had a deep impact on me. Um, one fine day when I was talking with uh, my batchmate, uh, the class monitor came around and noted down my name. And in the next moment, teacher punished me with 30 uh, uthak betak or sit-ups in front of the whole class. Uh, being a little sensitive child, this incident had a deep impact on me, not just because of the punishment which was rendered to me, but the nature of the punishment and also the unfairness of the event wherein the topper of the class with whom I was chit-chatting with was allowed to go scot-free. So that taught me a very, uh, very subtle uh, lesson that if you are hardworking, you have earned your way into the merit list, world treats you differently. And that's where the journey of trying to excel, trying to bring out the best in myself and competing to reach the top began and there's the time when I miraculously shot up from rank 101 to rank 15 to that year I stood first in my class so that is where it taught me that I can stand first in many situations in life later as I went to college I understood that other than competition there's something called balance there's something called prudence in decision making. And I gracefully learned that it's not always necessary to stand first, to talk in everything, because life is nevertheless, eventually a game of balance. So taking baby steps into life, my life has not been one of decisive success. It's more so of a series of failures, some are big, some are small, some are inconsequential, if, if, if you may say so. So after college, I was a software engineer with Infosys for a short time. Then I joined as a scientist in Council of Scientific and Industrial Research in Delhi. Later, I quit my job and I was a dedicated housewife or a hardcore homemaker, you may say so. And later, I was a lecturer in Siksha Anusandhan University for almost a year before joining the Indian Administrative Services. And let me tell you, each of these role profiles have been immensely gratifying to me. And each of these opportunities of life has let me learn a lot. And I have been equally happy in in all the roles that life has rendered me with. So let, let me ask you one question. Imagine your life as a river. A river forms a waterfall, a river forms a valley. When a river goes to form a waterfall to reach its destination, it has a quick, sharp, and decisive course, and it forms a waterfall. When a river is indecisive, it carries the burden of accumulated silt. It meanders and meanders, takes a long course, goes through a lot of habitations, forms a valley and reaches its destination. Now, its course is indecisive, it's long, but it nurtures life, it harbors civilization. So which is more beautiful? Is a waterfall more beautiful or is it a valley? For me, I call both because to each his own. So if you are a person who has achieved success quickly, decisively through your efforts, 
good you are a beautiful person but if you are a person who has taken baby steps into self awareness and into bringing out the best of her own self you are a beautiful person as well there is no need to hurry there is no need to worry so as you we have dedicated the entire day in learning about the beautiful and successful experiences of many gifted people many beautiful people i would like to all of you to ponder what is success who is the one who is successful let me tell you my perspective success is not an event it is a series of events success perhaps often is just doing the next right thing basically do the next right thing that is success and a person who does the next thing correctly is a successful person and a series of small small right things enables you to realize your vision that you have envisaged long ago people often call me that i am a happiness addict and i gracefully agree in fact i call myself a happiness addict confidently confused and perennially procrastinating procrastinating and foolishly following my dreams so there is one there is no one method of living the life rightly and i would like to just share my own method of being the happiness addict of living a happy and successful life for the last 3 decades so talking about success the inevitable ingredient is hard work so now what motivates you to do hard work is it motivational videos for me i have realized that hard work is the motivation to do harder work and there is no other way around it coming to the next one always people tell you if you are successful you will be happy i strongly 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 disagree with those people who say success is the key to happiness i believe happiness is the key to success because unless you are happy doing what you are doing you will never do it the best possible way you can so always choose doing what makes you happy take your heart's call and succeed in it talking about the next thumb rule it's called gratitude if you are a lot grateful for the little you get in life you will get a lot and if you are a little grateful for the lot that life offers you you will get a little so always be grateful for whatever the universe has bestowed on you the chaos and the beauty called life the next one rule is foolhardy optimism always believe that no matter how lost you are you will find your way because if god disturbs your plan you must trust his purpose and with faith you can conquer mountains people always aspire that the world should admire them the world should love them but what about their own opinion about themselves i must say this principle is called fly first love yourself if you are able to love yourself if you are able to consider yourself a good person a person with a clear conscience i'm sure the world would also adhere to your opinion about yourself the next thing that i would like to emphasize is patience in this world of progress reports from school performance appraisals in our corporate jobs then cutthroat competitions we forget to give patience a little time it's sometimes okay to not achieve anything for a long period of time it's sometimes okay to just sit down breathe ponder pause rest while all of us admire the branches the flowers the fruits a tree has it is always the root which holds it all together never never be ashamed of taking time 
taking patience to grow your own roots. That's what will hold you in good and bad times. And talking about greatness in life, I would like to quote Sant Kabir and his couplet, which has had a deep impact on me since school. It's about humility. Sant Kabir says, Bada hua to kya hua? Bada hua to kya hua? Jaise ped khajur. Panthi ko chaya nahi, fal lage ati dur. Bada hua to kya hua? Jaise ped khajur. Panthi ko chaya nahi, fal lage ati dur. So I'll just try to explain it in a bit. Where there's a weary traveler who goes and finds a date palm tree, but the date palm tree is tall, but is unable to provide the weary traveler with shade. It's just tall with no shade. And the date fruits are so high atop the tree that it cannot satisfy the hunger of the traveler. So even if you are a great man and your life holds no meaning for others, what is the use of your greatness is the question you must ask yourself. So humility is a great virtue and finding purpose and meaning to your life is the ultimate goal that you should nurture. Be humble in your rise, be tranquil in your fall. Talking about getting your goal right, I would share a very funny anecdote. So life should always be filled with self-deprecatory humor. Of course, this is not one which is self-deprecatory in nature, but I have read this a couple of days ago. Um, recently, in newspaper, there was a report of a thief who lost 10 kilos in three months so that he could enter his ex-owner's house through the ventilation, the exhaust fan window, he can fit himself through the window and he can carry out the burglary. He was successful in losing 10 kilos of weight in three months. He was successful in entering that window and he was successful in robbing his owner of 37 lakh rupees. At the end of the day, he was successful for whatever goal he envisaged. But what is the meaning of this success? I must appreciate the thief uh, in a world where, where the weight lo losing videos are sold for millions of dollars. But what kind of goal is this? So just to reiterate, all of us should reassess where we are going, not how fast we are going sometimes and get our goals right. Remember how great you rise in life. After you leave the chair where you sit in, the high chair, People will always remember the chair. They will only remember you if you have greeted them with a smile, if you have been nice to them, if you have been kind to them. Remember that a person defines the chair. Let not the chair define you. And never, never, ever stop growing in life. Build your hobbies, create art, learn a new thing each moment of the day. Keep yourself so busy, like I said, in foolhardy optimism that you have no time for negativity to sink into your heart. And since I am a girl, I would try to give a special message for all the girls out there, a big shout out for who they are and where they have come to. Because in this world where boys succeed, they succeed as individuals. But girls, girls are never individuals. Girls are an example. They are a stereotype. If a girl fails, it sets an example that girls cannot succeed. But if a girl wins, it sets a cascade of hope for millions of girls out there that there are places for exceptions in excellence. So, not just talking about the deep-rooted infanticide of girl-child, the dowry system, the domestic violence, I would like to talk about the subtle gender issues. No matter in our society, how far we progress, 
how far we go the world always tells that for women it is always an either or which works either you are a good mom a caring mom a doting mom or you are a professional a hardcore professional either you are a good wife a sacrificing wife or you are a self centered career loving woman in a corporate world just tell those people never mind just show those people tell them that they are wrong it's not the choice which defines you it's your choice it's never an either or in life never neither for girls nor for boys it's always an and and it's an and of choices you can be a good mom a doting wife a good daughter in law and a very career centric hard working professional who adheres to all timelines and all commitments it's only a matter of choice bottom line is girls never let the world tell you that it's either or tell them it's always an and and you can be the best in both worlds so i think i have shared a lot today if i'm considered so called successful i would like to give my gratitude to my parents to my in laws to my husband to my sister who has taught me balance in life and to my child my 2 year old toddler who tells me every day that mom it's okay to sign files for 18 hours a day but you're still a good mom so thank you for this wonderful opportunity and for having me here today in the end i would just like to tell you one small thing never be scared to dream but at the same time never be scared to dream big and fail fail fly flutter and fall fail fly flutter and fall rise up a thousand times and do it all do it all all over again fail fly flutter and fall rise up a thousand times and do it all thank you jai jagannath